Hello, this is a, a show I wanted to um, make comment upon. It's about girls in prison. And I wanted to contrast it to Chris Watts. Because I've been here because like, I've been off drugs, learned more about coping with This girl is 16. It was hard at first. One of the biggest problems with me is my parents. Not having them in my life. It hurts. I want a relationship with my parents. Like, I love. It just seems like they won't let me for who I am. This girl has been through hell and back, and yet she has no support system. And Chris Watts has... Oh, son, I love you, I love you. Is she doing anything today? All right, want to try to call Dad? So listen to this conversation, contrasted to Ronnie Watts hugging his son after he murdered his entire family and little girls. Is that you? Yeah, yeah. I have Hannah in here with me. Okay. Listen to this conversation. I think you look very, very beautiful. I feel like you look beautiful. I know. I have not seen him in like a year. One day I just called him. A year. He said that he'd been. Chris Watts, who murdered his three and four year old and his pregnant woman, gets visits from his parents, gets phone calls constantly, gets all this support. And also, when there was this murder trial for this man, a uh, famous uh, runner from South Africa who allegedly, because, you know, is allegedly, I guess, um, murdered, shut his beautiful girlfriend, uh, claiming she thought he thought she was an intruder. The support he got from the family is unbelievable. So you wonder why families of psychopaths, murderers, uh, get all this support where a young girl like that and I'll tell you what I think, but just think a little bit while you listen to the conversation she has with her father. She's 16 and she was on the streets. She was raped by a gang and then she was, she didn't get any support from her family. She lived in the streets and was picked up by the police. She was a prostitute. She was on drugs. And listen to this conversation with her father. Trying to get in touch with me. Like, if you wanted to talk to me, why haven't you, like, emailed me or anything? It's never them that runs back to me. Oh, we're looking okay. to visit. What day are you looking for? I'm going to try my phone to get there. What, what do you mean? Talk, like, drive. I'm going to see if I can work around and get there Sunday. What else do you have to do on a Sunday? That's my only day to get things done. How selfish. Your daughter is just like, you haven't seen her for a year and she's 16. So great. This is the message okay. she gets. Bye bye. No love. Like, meanwhile, Cindy, I love you, son. After he kills a three and four year old and his pregnant wife. So, what is this contrast? So, what uh, this is a show called Girls Incarcerated, Young and Locked Up. I myself worked as a as a, as a teacher, not with young girls, but with men. And my feeling was that there's no doubt in my mind that people who have a supportive family, people who have a feeling that somebody loves them at home, don't end up in prison on drugs or anything. That, And people sometimes get like support and they shouldn't. Um, I have siblings who are completely corrupt um, and yet they always got support for my mom because she felt sorry for them and I don't think I ever got support I don't know why is it that some children get support and others don't I was like really top student everything but it was just something about the relationship with my mother especially was I think it's because I was a very outspoken girl and I always told her what I thought about her and my siblings were always manipulative they're both psychopaths and when she died they just took everything and I, I think she was really supportive of my brother who stole a car never ended up in prison 
he was uh, aggressive towards me, never got any any problem. And he was always supported by my mom. She He was her favorite. She made him a partner in her finance. And of course, he just took all the money. And right now he has support of his family, of course, because they like to have a, a rich, li wealthy lifestyle. And I see this girl and I really can identify because I lived a life where I had zero support. I didn't have a daycare. I didn't have, I was like alone on the street. They gave me a dog at one point and I was really neglected. And I was, every time I had like a crisis, whether it was a car accident, I had zero support for my family. My mom would come, but then she would speak about herself. I think she was narcissistic. Like she would tell the nurses at the hospital when I'm lying in the hospital with a broken pelvis, um, at 19, she would talk about how she's afraid she's going to lose her job, even though this was her second job, second career. She already had a pension and she had a lot of money for my father. Now I know she was a multimillionaire and then she was crying she might lose her job. This is typical narcissistic. A lot of parents are not fit to be parents. They do not have an ability to support others. And their children do end up in prison or they end up in bad places. They end up with, al with addictions to alcohol or drugs. They end up like me, not knowing who to choose. And now I'm aware of it. It took me decades to know that I have to be really careful because I'm really attracted to psychopaths, people who cannot help me, people that are narcissistic, psychopath, this combination. Animals have really helped because animals love you no matter what and give you a lot of support. And that I uh, attribute to my own father, who was a nice person. He just died uh, of cancer when I was um, 18. So he wasn't in my life, in my adult <clears throat> years when I really messed up and had horrible relationships and didn't get, and had a car accident and where I didn't get any support from my family at all. And it was just really a difficult life. I don't remember my siblings really visiting me in the hospital or caring about whether I live or die. Um, many crises I had in my life, I had no support, no for my siblings. My mother would show up with food. That was her way, but no emotional contact. She was very, very cold-blooded. And everything was fake and phony about her. She was very much about herself. She was very obsessed with what she looked like, which is why I don't really bother with my looks. I don't put on makeup. I dress very simple. She was very, I think... I have a feeling that people that dress up a lot, they tend to be narcissistic. People that are all about fashion and makeup too much. And this is the kind of mother she was. She was always obsessed with what she looked like and how things appeared. And my siblings were great at like um, manipulating and not confronting her. And I used to confront her and then I got penalized for that. So actually I welcome when children say things to me but my own relationship with my children is also not that simple um i won't get into it because i want to respect their privacy but i think i really had a hard time being a mother not having had a mother role model um i think it would have been easier for me to be a father because i did have a good fa a father who was there for me until he passed away also he had to work uh, long hours and where was my mother god only knows working why she didn't need the money just because she obviously couldn't function as a mother also so it's generation after generation of neglect um and i think it's really important that parents go to therapy i went to therapy but too late uh go to therapy before you have kids figure out how to be a parent and realize that your children when especially when they're young they really don't have anyone else that's who they have and it's really sick for me how the watts support their son no matter what so we have these contrasts people that do horrible things monsters get support and sweet girls like her they get like a father that just doesn't even bother to show up I see so many girls like that's their support system is their parents and like it sucks not having them. I agree with her. In my life, he just seems like he don't want to visit at all. It just feels exactly. like I'm unwanted. But Chris Watts, he gets a girlfriend. His parents constantly call. His mother and father embrace him after he murders. So I think that 
a lot of times psychopaths they have unconditional love where they and they have no boundaries they've never been taught to treat other people well and then there's the other side is people that are neglected and usually those two opposites meet like a girl like that is a great risk like in Israel we call it girls at risk i don't know what they call them in in the US but girls at risk are girls that come from homes where they were abused not necessarily directly but ignoring a girl not giving them attention not sitting down and talking to them not caring what they do is a type of abuse and when you grow up in a home like that where you didn't get attention where nobody cares what you do uh you're attracted to people like that as partners and then you attract the same types of people that neglected you at childhood are going to be your husbands for girls right i don't know about boys and then you're going to get abused sometimes um physically abused mentally abused psychologically abused by these men and sometimes even murdered so girls like that really need to be if they go to prison they need to really sit down with therapists who will teach them not to to not to act on this attraction because it's really strong it's like a magnet you really want to fix your childhood so you are attracted to the very people who abused you you're reenacting your childhood drama uh because this is what you know and when you see someone who reminds you of your parents you you think oh maybe this time i can fix it maybe i can get their attention at last but you never will because narcissists and psychopaths will never give you attention because they can't do it i often wonder why my brother uh ignores me lies steals from our inheritance why does he do that and well i don't have answers what i know now and it's hard to accept that i'm never going to get him to form uh affection towards me he's my older brother he's never going to be nice he's never been nice to me he was physically abusive to me as a child he was physically abusive to me as an adult he slapped my face when my mom died he he did everything in his power that I don't take him to court and I was and it worked um my sister as well they only care about money uh but I told him my last conversation with him I feel sorry for you because I wouldn't want to be on that side I wouldn't want to be a person that's abusive to other people and not care about them not having compassion is is really sad it's like not having heart it's not really able to be able to be emotionally there for anyone i don't believe that a person can like that can form emotional emotional bonds they can only bond with the bank and like people like chris watts the reason why he googled went to say i love you is because he doesn't know how to feel he is the psychopaths narcissists they don't know how to feel they don't know how, they don't have real bonds with people they can have like sex with people and they can feel like physical urges like eating they can have physical pleasures but they don't understand what it's like to 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 have a, a, an emotional bond with anyone and i think they're very bad with animals as well as my conclusion i don't think you can teach a psychopath to not be a psychopath i really don't i think there are maybe situations where a person is not really a psychopath but they act like it maybe then an animal can come in but i wouldn't give them a dog or a cat i would expect that dog or cat to be gone my sister would put cats to sleep um get rid of them psychopaths first victims are animals so i wouldn't use animal therapy to cure them of that sometimes i thought oh if only i can get my ex-husband a dog he would be so nice but when i saw him pull the leash and treat her badly i realized that was a mistake that somebody who's mean to animals uh somebody who's mean to people will definitely be mean to people Uh, to uh, somebody who's mean to people abusive to people will definitely be abusive to animals and i don't think you can teach a person to be nice to people when they're psychopaths it's very deep embedded in them i don't see a way out of it you can help people definitely that are not psychopaths that are not narcissists but if you're a narcissist i don't see how you can teach you to bond um that reminds me of donald trump he's a typical narcissist psychopath and i'm i'm absolutely sure his niece was spot on his niece is a psychologist she says he's a narcissist psychopath or a narcissist at least he's the only president us president that doesn't have a pet 
The reason he doesn't have an animal is because he can't really form emotional bonds. All his wives are like models. He looks for this physical thrill, but he's not able to really bond. The way he talks about his children, it's like property. My Ivanka, my beautiful Ivanka. And I think he's jealous of Joe Biden, although Joe Biden probably is corrupt, that he does have a family bond somehow, or anyone who has a family bond. He's jealous of anyone who has a family because he doesn't real he doesn't have a bond himself. Well, I am also envious of people that have family bonds. I question, I always question whether family bonds are genuine or not because of my history. Because I know that for a long time, if you look at our family photo, you think, what a nice family. But you didn't see the psychopaths lurking there. You didn't see how I'd always have to fear for my safety when I was a child because I could so easily be physically abused by my siblings and psychologically abused by my mom. So it was quite, and even my father, who was a good man, he never really supported me unless I was like, he was thinking, oh, it's such an intelligent child, she'll be a doctor. And he said to me, oh, you'll be a dentist and I'll be, I'll be just like doing the, taking in the money. And I thought that was a horrible sentence to say to a little girl. And he, had he encouraged me, maybe I would have had better bonds with men as well though I think my mother contributed more to my relationship problems. Definitely, my mother was a very disturbed human being, I had to say it. And the problem with these kind of mothers or fathers, they send mixed messages like this father will say to his daughter, oh, you're so beautiful. You know, they, they, funny enough, my mom always said that to me too, but she never actually had a conversation with me. There was always like these monologues which say, oh, you're so beautiful. And my aunts also, oh, you're so nice. But never really listened. There was no listening. There's no conversation. And I think I'm really handicapped in that way. I don't think I can really have uh, relationships with human beings. But because I'm not a psychopath, I'm a, actually a compassionate person, an empath. I form bonds with animals very well, with children. I'm very compassionate to children and animals. I have a hard time with adults because the adults in my life have been so abusive. So if you have this background like me, I definitely recommend getting a cat, especially a cat. It's so empathic. People give them a bad rap, but you know, I've often been asked, can cats give you affection a hell of a lot more than human beings? A hell of a lot. So it's interesting to see this. Uh, the contrast, and it makes me bitter, but I look at it as the learning experience, the Watts case, the murder trials where men get all this support from their family and lawyers or whatever, or as we call them, liars. Psychopaths in our society get a lot of support. When I see Donald Trump, you know what? I can't understand how any sane human being can support him after listening to his speeches where he talks about himself, even with the coronavirus. So it all connects. It sounds to you like I'm going on, but it all connects for me because I really want to understand what psychopaths are like so I don't make the mistake again. And sadly, I am still finding myself attracted to human beings that are not very nice to me. This time it's women friends. I try to make bonds with people that are so selfish and not able to give back anything. Uh, like one friend, I asked her if she could save me a um, newspaper she subscribes to. And she said, oh, no, she's the most selfish human being I've ever seen in my life. She's never invited me to her house. Four years I've known her. She came here to my apartment. I had her over for dinner. She's never once offered uh, anything to me, even though I asked her for a paper or anything, even her time. And she's definitely a learning experience. So don't be angry at people that don't give you what you need emotionally. Just recognize it as red lights. And um, I would call it uh, signs that you're on the way to healing. Because if, really, if you really are able to understand and comprehend why people disappoint you, why you're attracted to people who disappoint you, then that will be a huge way to recovery and not a, and not to experience the pain painful uh, trauma of childhood.
And as for Donald Trump, my God, I don't know. I feel like sometimes that you have to be a psychopath to lead a country in this world, in this climate. I think if you're a nice guy, I don't think you can, can, you can deal with terrorism. So I think as a leader, okay, as a husband and father, no thank you. I don't know why his children follow him like that, but I think it has to do with the psychopath manipulation, narcissist manipulation. Those children will never rebel against him, will never say a bad word about their father. And I don't know how a sane, intelligent, college graduate person can listen to his speech and actually say, my father loves America. Millennia is like a wind-up doll. Like she says what is, what is expected of her. And the whole thing about making America great again and saying this is the greatest nation, it contradicts. If it's the greatest nation, why do you have to make it great again, right? And what is this greatest nation? That disturbs me a lot. Because in Israel, a lot of people used to think that U.S. was like this dream. A lot of Israelis live there and think, oh, one of my ex-boyfriends lives there and he's done well for himself. He married a woman with a green, with American citizenship. He's doing well. However, is it a land of dreams when other people, so many people in America live such a horrible life? There's so many homeless, so much crime, so many young people in the streets, so many people on drugs. And whatever you can say, I know that Israeli prison system is one of the leaders in rehabilitations, which is why I was proud to work there. And I think American prison system is not necessarily rehabilitation. It's about just keeping people and afterwards ruining their lives. Because I understand that a prisoner cannot vote. And I understand that every third African-American man is in prison. And there are, the next story is about a girl. Her father was in prison and she ended up in prison. And I think it's important to watch this, uh, watch these videos. I know that when I was working in a prison, I was first of all very grateful that I wasn't in this situation. And second of all, I was like really feeling empathy for these people who obviously had very difficult childhoods and the system failed them and didn't do the rehabilitation before they committed crimes, before they took drugs. There's not enough prevention in Israel. There's no prevention in Israel, but there is a lot of rehabilitation. Once you're in prison, you got therapy with animals, therapy with this, therapy with that. They told me every single minute of their days filled with therapy and, you know, towards nonviolence, which is very important. But why can't they do it before? Why can't they locate kids at risk and try to work with them before they end up in prison is a huge question. Um, and so I hope this will be a learning experience. I don't want to be angry. I want to learn and 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 uh, make conclusions for my own life. Um, one of my professors said, men is born free but lives in cages. And I definitely think that we can only appreciate what freedom is when we know what it's like when you don't have your freedom. When every single minute of your day is controlled by other people. And we have to also realize that freedom is like a sort of uh, illusion, that we're not really free. We have all these things, powers in society. When I lived in Switzerland, I felt, I felt it because it's such a controlling society that even if your dog barks, the police shows up. Even if you're at the lake, the police shows up. And if you're not a citizen, they even are harder. And they, they just control everything in the society, whether it's garbage. And yes, it's great to live in a clean society, but the price is that the police are constantly supervising everything and you can get really heavy fines and nobody cares about whether you can afford it or not. And it's really sad. So I decided to get the hell out of there, mm -hmm. even though I miss the beautiful nature and my children will live there. But... It's just constant stress, and I think a lot of people living in Switzerland are dealing with a lot of anxiety because of the fact that their life is constantly controlled. They live like in a prison, because everything you do, you'll get a huge fine, and you'll get into these financial debts unless you really do whatever the system says, which is why my children live with a father who's part of the system as well, and they act accordingly. But people in Switzerland don't really ask why is everything so controlled? Why is everything so expensive? Why are people having to pay such heavy fines? And why is a barking dog uh, 
a reason to for two police people to show up and threaten you even. Um, and even, you know, you can't even take a shower after 10. So I think some societies are like prison. Definitely it's in Asia. I always dreamed of going to Japan. But if indeed it's what I heard, I wouldn't want to live in a society that has so many rules. In Israel, we have the opposite problem. We have a lot of freedom, but there's a lot of chaos and filth in the street. People don't really care. But on the other hand, I got this. In Switzerland, you're not allowed to put things outside. They go to secondhand shops where you have to pay. And in Israel, you just ask your neighbor. I had a neighbor, and you have nice neighbors. And so, like in Switzerland, where people don't want to help each other so much, with exceptions, um, few exceptions I've had. I definitely feel in Israel, I could ask any young person on the street, and they'll help me carry this thing home. So, thank you, Israel, for being a more free society, at least to me. I don't know how it is for everyone else. Uh, with the corona, we experienced the Swiss like life with constant police control. It was really horrible. I felt a lot of anxiety. And I really feel like people in prison feel a lot of anxiety too because of the control. But you have to find a balance between control and lack of control. Peace, light, and love.